Hey, God is really clear. He's like really clear in his word. Like if you read in the first chapter of Isaiah, God's talking to his people. Or in uh, Amos, God's talking to his people, right? Or in Jeremiah, God's talking to his people. Told Jeremiah to go stand at the gates of the temple. And what was going on in the land was child sacrifice was going on in the land. And God's people were basically playing church. They were doing all the religious things, but they weren't bringing justice to the land. And God's response was, you're making an enemy of me. Put away your musics. Your worship is like a stench to me. Like I, like I hate it, you know? First bring justice to the land and then your prayers will be answered. I'll hear your prayers, but now, because of what's going on in the land, I will not hear your prayers, even though there be many, it says, you know? So what happens is Christians love to go to sing events like this one, right? But nobody's at the crisis, or nobody's at the abortion mill, the murder mill, right? And it's totally legal in America, even though we have a complete Republican control of the whole governmental system right now. But nobody's going and saying, look, we need to make it illegal. We're cowtailing down, we're bowing down to the Supreme Court. Right, and we shouldn't be doing that. What we should be doing is, and I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you to be a crazy guy holding signs like me. Right. I'm not, not doing that. All I'm saying is, let's get our priorities right. You know, worship. God says he'll he'll take it, but first bring justice to the land. He says, put down your instruments. Like literally, he tells it the, his people that of Judah, right? And go out there and bring justice to the land, and then come back and then I'll accept your worship, you know? But who told you I want these things? Who told you to go do these things, you know? Like, not me. And like God even said, I couldn't even imagine that my people would do such things, you know, abortion, killing their own children, right? Couldn't even imagine it. And that's God, <laughs> you know? So it's like a big deal to God, right? It's not, it's not like, whoops, sorry. Let me give you one of these. It's small, insignificant, but anyway. Just take a look at it, consider it, you know? Because the gray-haired old men who stood at the gates for the last 43 years have ignored child sacrifice. They've allowed it to run rampant. And we don't want to be evil and wicked like them who raise up a generation of apathy who don't care about anything, right? But can you imagine child sacrifice being legal and all those people above us, you know, didn't care, you know? I, so. I can't. I don't know what happened in 1973 and why. It was yeah. before that, really. It was before that. The, the fiber of the nation has been falling apart for a long time. And you know what? Like, in, I'm from Texas. We have 70,000 pastors in Texas. All right? 70,000. Uh, we're talking like senior pastors, like head pastors, right? Of evangelical churches. All right? There's over 30,000 churches, uh, evangelical churches in Texas. Um, and there's 13,000 kids right now in Texas in foster care waiting to be adopted. And nobody wants them. They, they, they go through the whole system until they age out, right? But the gays and lesbians are adopting them. 13,000 kids right now, 70,000 pastors, you know? It's like the spirit of this age in the church, that's why God sends prophets in the Old Testament, right? And then calls us all to be prophets in the New Testament, right? To like speak God's word and say, hey, this is what God says, right? You know, when we have a land where child sacrifice is ignored, like everybody has a good opinion, right? Like you, you're against it, right? I'm not just against it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, so people have a good moral opinion, yeah. but we have to actually do stuff to make it illegal. Right, like, so what should we do? Okay, well. So I, I'm like, so for me, I yeah. was at the abortion mill this year. Right, which is a good I've thing to there, do, right? right? I've been there. Yeah. One of them closed down in Nashville, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, one of our abortion clinics that's, a, down in that's a good thing to do. And helping women and adopting kids, like I adopted six kids out of the foster care system, right? Those are all good things to do, right? But it won't make abortion illegal. Right. Helping a crisis pregnancy center is a good thing to do, but it won't make it illegal. So what we have to do is actually get involved in government, right. show up to our district meetings, like you have a district where you live, yeah. and they're full of Republicans, and it's fruitful soil, man. It's like good soil. You can go there and say, hey, we should make abortion illegal. And you know what everybody does? Yeah, you're right. We should do that. So we walked into the Republican convention meeting and went in there. And at the end of like seven days, was just walking in there with pamphlets saying, hey, you need to repent of being pro-life. Because the pro-life movement, what it does is it regulates when, where, and how you can murder babies. That's all it does. Never has it tried to make abortion illegal. And then when Texas actually put a bill to make it illegal, they opposed it. 
you know, because all the churches, you know how they right, give their... About, like National Rights to Life. Right. Right, yeah. In Texas, right to life. life people, yeah. Right. Well, the pro-life people think they're working to make it illegal. Yeah. But well, the I mean, leaders of, of these like, organizations... Of lower down people who really do want it illegal. But right. The, the organizations are not actually in that way. Right. They they're in the, making any money. They're funding. Yeah. Funding. And all the, all the, all the Republican uh, candidates are rated on how pro-life they are. Yeah. So, you know, when a bill comes up to make it illegal, the right to life groups oppose it yeah. and they say no 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 we can't make it illegal and they're like people go why can't we make it illegal and they say well because it'll criminalize women and women who kill their babies will have to put them in jail yeah. and they're like well if a woman has like a six month old baby and she kills it because she's like doesn't have the money to feed it so she just kills it does she go to jail yeah <laughs> you know she should <laughs> you should right yeah, yeah. so should be. so what we do is we okay. work to make it illegal we get like like I live right by Chuck Swindoll's church, okay, you know, yeah. um, but he says, no, we don't get involved in politics, you know, but it's like, we should, like, yeah. you should actually go to these district meetings because you'd be like a popular guy. You're a Christian, you know, you're a Republican probably, you know, I mean, well, <laughs> well see, the thing is, right, right, but we can't, like, if all the good men leave the Republican Party, what do we have left? Wicked men, wicked men, right? That's true, yeah. So, well, well, we it, right now almost everybody's Christians, supposedly, just like in the churches, supposedly yeah. Christians, right? So, if you go and work to make it illegal, it will become illegal. They will actually, like, we put forth the bill, and we had eleven uh, representatives sign it, right? And it, but they, but Texas Right to Life had it tabled, right? So it didn't get voted on. But that was just the first year. We'll do it again. Yeah. And that's what they did with slavery of black people, right? Sure. So it didn't happen overnight, but godly men rose up. Did the church like them? Did pastors like them? No, they didn't like them. They're like, half of the people that go to our church have slaves. They're the ones with the money. Like, don't cause waves, right? Like, yeah, so. I mean, it depended on the church, but sure, I get that, yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, and we're not here because we hate anybody here, yeah. you know? In fact, all I do is tell them what the Bible says, you know, like God does actually hate our worship. If we live in a culture where child sacrifice is legal, unopposed, and what we do is we go, well, hey, you know what we should do? We should have like great prayer meetings, you know? Or it's kind of like if a woman is being raped over there and people said, you know what we need to do? We need to have like more women's services, you know, like women that get raped and stuff. We should yeah. do things like that. Instead of going over and helping the girl who's getting raped right. and stopping the rape, right? That's, it's it's so, a little different situation. Just cause, but yeah, yeah, I... I I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. But a lot of a lot of pastors, a lot of churches are like modern day country clubs. Mm -hmm. You know? Like that's where we go to fellowship, hang out with people that are like minded, right? Yeah. Not a place where we go out and affect the world and take dominion over the world. The Bible tells us to take dominion over the world, right? Yeah. Like if they opened up a strip club next to your house, you wouldn't be like, Oh, that sucks. You'd be like, hey, we gotta do something about this. Yep. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> right? I so anyway, so there's thousands and thousands of people that are coming this, but the abortion mill down the street, nobody's gonna be at. And I get tired of being at the abortion mill. So I, I go, hey, help, help. Don't, I'm not saying give me money. Yeah. I'm just saying, hey, like they're killing babies right there. Yeah, and I agree with you, although we do need a, we need a multi-pronged attack, because even if we get rid of abortion now and make it illegal, I well, mean, we do. In 1973, they were willing to make it legal. So right. there's no, nothing to say that in 10 years they won't make it legal again. And, so we need a, and it was we the do Baptist. Need a spiritual revival. Right. We, totally. Well, that's what we're talking about eventually here, right? Is yeah. revival, being obedient to the Word of God. Because God can't help us if we're being um, incremental, if we regulate sin. If we say, well, you, anything older than this, you can't kill. Yeah. But this is okay. I understand. Yeah. You know, that's an incremental law, right. right? Murder is murder. Murder is murder. And we were all here. We were all that age. Right. You know? Jesus was. That's how he came. You know, it was in the womb, right? And so, uh, you know, yeah, so that's what we're saying. And you know what? Not everybody has to be a crazy guy like Homer Simpson here who's saved. I'm a saved Homer Simpson. Nobody has to be like me and hold dead baby signs up for Christians to see. Yeah. Not everybody has to do that. But the bride of Christ is big enough that if we were just obedient to God, those 13,000 orphans would be adopted out of Texas. Yeah. You know, like the army of God's big enough, but who nobody wants to take out the trash or go save the person being murdered Nobody wants to even deal with that or work on that. Yeah, pastors okay. tell me this because I used to talk to a lot of pastors I quit doing that. I'd rather stick a fork in my eye than talk to another pastor, you know, but um, What what these pastors say is oh, man? I can't deal with this because too many of my I know a third of my congregants have had abortions 
So it's like it's too hot a topic. Like yeah. people will leave my church if I start if I say, hey, here's how we're gonna make it illegal. Here's yeah. how we're gonna oppose it. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. Right. I mean, right, right. Yeah. So, so anyway, I appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. God bless. Preaching the truth. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Preaching the truth. <laughs>